Hi all, welcome to part 7 of Chief Mate's Oral Examinations. Today I'll take up a set of 3 or 4 different questions and we'll discuss it uh, to understand how you would answer these questions if they are asked of you in, during the oral examination. Uh, I hope you have been watching uh, this series and if not then I have given the links to the previous 6 parts of these videos in the description section below other, other, apart from other videos so please watch it before you go for oral examination. There's no harm in uh, learning something extra, just confirming your existing knowledge. So let's get started. Uh, today's first question is, uh, what would you do if the load concentration of a heavy lift exceeds the tons per square meter as stipulated by the load density plan? So again, if you have not been sailing on cargo ships or general cargo ships or container ships, then um, you may not understand what's going on here. So there is a picture to explain you in the next slide. I'll show you the picture as well for you to understand. But uh, even though you may not have been sailing on cargo ships, you may be asked this question. So this question basically means that uh, your company has asked you to load a cargo on a hatch top or a hatch cover or a deck cover uh, and it is exceeding the tons per square meter. All right, so it's called the load density. It's exceeding the load density. What would you know? Now, you might say that if it exceeds the load density, I would refuse the cargo. Now, of course, uh, by practices of seamanship, many chief officers, many masters do not like to load cargo that exceeds the load density. But in actuality, in all uh, reality, if your company has sent you a heavy lift cargo and heavy lift cargoes more or less always exceed the load density, because the hatch covers are not designed to be carrying more than the stipulated cargo, then you would have to accept it, you have to load it because there's a lot of charges involved in it. But there are ways to compensate if the cargo exceeds the load density plan. So of course, one of the ways is that the deck area for the intended storage space can be laid with timber bearers in order to spread the load over a greater square area. I'll show you what I mean in the next slide when I show you the picture. Now. If the intended storage is in a twin deck, then additional under deck supports in the form of temporary additional pillars may also need to be constructed. So basically what happens here is you try to spread the load of the cargo over a bigger space. I'll show you in the next slide. Now if you failing this, if you are unable to do this, then you have to find an alternative storage position where you are able to do it. So if you say that, oh, but the space where I'm loading the cargo, I do not have enough space to uh, put in additional timber bearers, timber supports, timber bars or pillars, then you have to find another space because the only way you can carry a cargo which exceeds the load density plan is to spread the weight of the cargo. So I'll show you how. So if you see the picture here, this is what it is showing. So you can see in the center of the picture, there is a dark colored square and that is basically the load. Imagine that to be the load. All right, now you can see before the loading started, your ship permitted load density plan was six tons per meter square. All right, so any cargo that you load, it could not exceed six tons of weight per meter square on which it is loaded. Now let's say in this example here, the load dimensions was 3 meter by 4 meter and it's covering an area of 12 meter square. So 3 by 4 is 12, 3 meter by 4 meter is 12 meter square. That is the area it is covering. But the weight of the cargo is 120 tons. So if you divide 120 tons by 12 meter square, then every meter square is being covered by 10 tons. But your permitted load is 6 ton per meter square, but you have loaded here 10 tons per meter square. So in this case, your deck has become overloaded. All right. But what you can do is before you load the cargo onto the deck, what you can do is you can place the load on bearers. What are bearers? Bearers are nothing but planks of wood that can take the weight, that can absorb the weight and spread it over a larger deck area. So if you lay out the bearers horizontally and vertically, like you see in the picture, in a way that the cargo comes and sits on it. And when you lay out the bearers, the area also increases of the cargo being loaded. So in this case, let's say you lay out the you laid out the bears in such a way that the cargo now covered by it is 5 meter by 7 meter. So 5 meter by 7 meter instead of 3 meter by 4 meter is now giving you a area coverage of 35 meter square. Now if you divide 120 tons by 35 meter square, 
you are covering you are actually loading 3.43 tons per meter square which is much lesser than the permitted load and therefore it is acceptable all right because i know that i said you cannot refuse the cargo but you also have to take the precautions when you are loading the cargo because if you load the cargo without the bearers and during the voyage a damage happens or the cargo creates some kind of damage or the shifting of cargo happens or something happens to the hatch cover once you discharge the cargo you see that the hatch cover is now damaged or the twin deck is damaged then of course your company will not like it although they want you to carry the cargo they don't want any damages to the ship so that's why even though you accept to load the cargo you have to take the precautions by using these bearers increasing the loading area so basically you are increasing the loading area and the load or the weight of the cargo is now getting distributed over a higher area so when it gets distributed over a higher area the load density per meter square is reduced so there is lesser load on the deck cover per meter square so that's the trick of loading cargoes uh, which are exceeding the load density this is quite a common occurrence on cargo ships container ships so you won't be surprised if you have been sailing on them but if you are from a tanker background or offshore vessels and you are not sure about what this is then this is a pretty common occurrence every now and then the company does send in a heavy load all right now many times the port takes precautions for it the port comes in and makes arrangements but there are times when the port will not make arrangements they are not worried about what happens to your ship their job is only to load the cargo so it becomes your job as a chief officer to take the precautions to find out if the cargo is being going to be placed on load bearers or not the next question here is when taking a ship into a dry dock why do the dock authorities usually request the ship to be trimmed by the stern now if you have been to dry docks you will realize that the ship is normally trimmed by stern or even during normal voyages chief officers masters they like the ships to be trimmed by stern now of course i am sure you guys are preparing for chief mess examination so you are experienced enough you know some of the reasons now during sea voyages of course we like the ship to be trimmed by stern is because the propeller immersion is ensured Uh, the propeller immersion is ensured so there is less load on the propeller and the rudder stock so it's better steering better sailing purposes but for dry dock also the ships are trimmed by stern that is the requirement of the dry dock most of the times they request for it so the reason is that the ship then again tends to handle and steer better with a stern trim because you know like with more immersion when you are in the water it's easier to handle the ship then the second reason is the declivity of the dock bottom is compatible with the trim angle now what is declivity it is the slope of the dock bottom so the slope of the dock bottom is known as the declivity so the way the dock bottom slope is designed or the way the the bars in the dock bottom are designed the top of that the slope of that is very compatible with the ship's trim angle the way the ship will be trimming how the how the bottom will be entering and how the forward part of the vessel will be entering into the dock bottom the declivity the slope of the dock bottom is is designed in such a way that it suits and the ship when it is trimmed by stern the third reason is the sole piece which is an aft strength member and will be the first part of the vessel structure to make contact with the blocks so that is achieved with a stern trim so like i said when the ship goes in the first part because the ship is trimmed by stern the forward part is up from the water the stern is uh, immersed and the forward part is above the stern of course the forward draft is much lesser than the stern draft so naturally when you go into the dock and slowly as the water starts to be pumped out of the dock dry dock it's the stern it's a stern that sits first on the dock bottom and it is the sole piece which is an aft strength member or aft strengthening member of the aft part which will be the first part and that is more convenient or more achievable with a stern trim now of course some of you who are very smart will say that but we have gone to a dry dock with head term trim we have gone into a dry dock with cargo of course those uh, those those are possibilities you can be asked to go into the dry dock with a head trim but uh, most likely this is not the case unless it's an emergency maybe your ship has not been able to achieve a stern trim or because of some structural damage or some flooding your ship is trimmed by head those are extreme cases most of the dry docks if you go into will request you to come with a stern trim similarly most of the dry docks that you go into will like to avoid having any cargo on board unless there are emergency repairs emergency or the ship has been due for a dry dock and you are too late and you the company the owner wants you to quickly go and get a check done um, but they do not have the window for the cargo to be completely discharged so those are extreme cases most of the companies because they spend so much time on dry docks they like the ship to go empty 
they like to go and the dry dock authorities also like to take the ship in with a stern trim because that's how most likely most of the times they want the ship to come in all right it's safer for the ship as well as it suits the dry dock authorities all right so of course in extreme cases you may have to go with head trim or with cargo as well the third question today here is that the chief engineer informs you that a valve in the coffer dam requires a routine maintenance as the ship's chief officer what would you do now such a task inside a coffer dam must be considered as an enclosed space activity so if you have never seen a coffer dam you know the coffer dams are spaces which are enclosed there are manholes closed with manholes they are not normally ventilated so naturally if there is any kind of maintenance that is required to be carried out you would treat it as an enclosed space entry and you would prepare and check the space as an enclosed space as an enclosed space so you have to obtain a permit to work for an enclosed space entry carry out a risk assessment before any work is sanctioned now of course you may treat this as an enclosed space entry and in the exam in during the oral examination you may say that i will consult the ism checklist for enclosed space entry now only saying that will not be enough for you guys you have to list out what might be there in the ism checklist for IIS enclosed space entry as well all right so for example you will say that you will ensure that the space is adequately ventilated it's illuminated the atmosphere has been tested using an explosive meter oxygen analyzer personnel should be briefed before carrying out the task uh, communications should be established with the bridge making sure that everybody is informed a man should be standing by uh, a man or woman would be should be standing by at the designated space outside the space while the engineers are actively engaged so you would take charge in that in that respect you would simply not say that i will consult the ism checklist because then the surveyor might ask you so what is there in the ism checklist why don't you tell me so you should be prepared with that answer as well so you have to make sure that the checks are made that this task does not overlap with any other ongoing work in the same vicinity which may lead to a conflicting hazard so what is an example of that so for example you have entered a uh enclosed space and if there is any hot work going on at an adjacent space then it is not safe for you to do so all right so this is an example that you would make sure that there is no conflicting work there is no other work that is going on which might also distract the attention of the person who's supervising this work and make sure you familiarize yourself with an enclosed space or a confined space entry checklist uh, always talk about permit to work always talk about adequate ventilation talk about safety make sure that you adequately carry out all the tests required before you enter the space so any kind of questions like this please uh, stress on the safety aspect first make sure that you are talking about a lot about safety before you even try to make an entry into the space that would impress your oral surveyor a uh, final question today is uh, while on a voyage across the pacific ocean the master of the ship suffers a heart attack and dies what is the expected action of the chief officer now see the question here and realize the importance of uh, the mention of the pacific ocean this basically is trying to tell you that you are in the middle of nowhere uh, and uh, the nearest port is a bit far away and that is what otherwise uh, some students may act smart and they say oh i will go to the nearest port Uh, the next day and get a new master signed on so that is not the case here what the surveyor wants to know from you is how responsible you are how how whether you can assume the duty remember that as a chief officer you are the second in command of the vessel so that means that if anything happens to the master if the master is in incapacitated whether he dies or gets seriously injured or whether he is unable to perform the duties you should be able to step in and perform them now of course uh, that's why companies like the chief officers to get the master's ticket as soon as possible but even though you may not have the master's ticket if something happens to the chief of the master he is incapacitated or he or she is incapacitated you would have to step in as the second in command all right so you should immediately assume command of the vessel inform all the senior officers and crew of the death and the change of command make sure you put an entry into the official logbook making this effect and stating the reason why chief officer has been asked to assume the command you should also make an entry in the deck logbook under the headings of births and deaths uh, on board the ship so we are talking about official logbook as well as the normal deck logbook to reflect the death of the master all right also of course it goes without saying that you would have to inform the company the designated person show the dpa uh, make sure that the master's body is isolated in a cool storage place and the ship's owners must be informed of the incident and the current status of the vessel company instructions are expected to be uh, followed 
they will advise you on the subsequent action whether you, they want you to go to the nearest port of refuge whether they want you to resume the voyage and reach the next port to avoid any delays uh, make sure that you obtain any witness statements photographic evidence should be retained for future inquiries now remember in this case here also when you start the question start uh, when you start answering the question make sure that uh, you start off with saying that you will verify that the master has uh, passed away or he has died and you can um, refer to the medical guide for ships international medical guide for ships it used to be known as the ship captain's medical guide this is these days is known as the medical guide for ships and make sure that you carry out all the checks to verify that the person has actually died on the ship and uh, only then verify the death only then as you uh, make sure if you want you can seek radio medical advice as well verify the death and only then start proceeding with the rest of the answer all right always keep the company informed the charters informed the owners informed get their advice as well but make sure you 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 put in the appropriate entries in the logbook as required dates make sure that you get witness statements verify the death of the master by other witnesses as well make sure they have carried out the checks as well you have carried out all the initial and later checks isolate the body in the ship's fridge or the refrigeration make sure the morale of the crew is maintained all right so the morale often goes down whenever there is a death or a serious injury on the ship make sure the morale of the crew is maintained uh, everybody is very clear on what they are expected to be doing and how you would go about doing the duties of course uh, your job is to take the ship safely now to the nearest port and making sure you follow the company's instructions and uh, as soon as you do that the company will arrange for a new master or if you are uh, fortunate then you might give you a promotion as well all right so that's pretty much it i will uh, in my next video take up a set of different questions i try to take up different questions because then you are pretty much prepared for your oral examination so every time i'll try to take up some of out of the ordinary questions because if you are thrown with such questions it's not a surprise to you all right i'll see you soon with my next video guys thanks for writing to me thanks for all the comments and the feedback and the suggestions I try my best to make these videos. It takes time to make videos or to prepare presentations, but I'll try my best to address all your feedback. Thanks guys. Bye.